Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and for a long time I've wanted a Thunderbolt hub that works like a USB hub where you can plug one cable in and get many ports out. And now we've got one here from OWC. This is their Thunderbolt hub, and what it allows you to do is plug a single Thunderbolt cable into your Thunderbolt equipped PC and then get three more ports that you can use here on the back to connect additional Thunderbolt devices and they have a 10 gigabit per second USB port here on the front. And we're going to be taking a closer look at this device and how it works in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this device is all about. Although this does have a USB-C connector, this will only work on Thunderbolt equipped devices. This is compatible with any Mac with a Thunderbolt 3 port. And I tried it on the oldest Mac with Thunderbolt 3, which is my 2016 MacBook Pro. It works fine with that, but it only works with Thunderbolt 4 equipped PCs. And I guess the reason is that uh, Thunderbolt 3 is not implemented in the same way on the PC as it was on the Mac. So a little earlier, we did try to plug it into my uh, Lenovo gaming laptop here with a Thunderbolt 3 port. And while the system recognized the dock, it didn't recognize any Thunderbolt devices that I connected to it. Oddly enough, though, uh, the USB devices we connected to it were recognized. So it shows up as a USB hub, but not a Thunderbolt hub. Uh, so just be aware of that. So uh, Thunderbolt 4 only on the PC, but any Mac with a Thunderbolt 3 port will work. At least it did in our testing. And we tried out a couple of different Macs here, including the new M1 Mac. Now, in addition to giving you additional Thunderbolt ports, uh, this also supports power delivery. It delivers 60 watts of power, and that is more than enough for the M1 Mac. It's a little less than what you might want on a MacBook Pro, but I found over the years that even though these things don't deliver as much power as the Mac power adapter does, typically the only penalty for that would be the battery not charging when the computer's under heavy load. But if you're finding that things aren't working the way you want, you might want to also plug in your power adapter. But on the smaller machines, it'll work fine. And I've been using this for the better part of a week now with my uh, MacBook Air with the Apple Silicon upstairs, and it's been working just fine. Now, the dock, of course, is pretty small, but the power supply that it comes with is not. Uh, rather large here, but it needs to be because it's providing that 60 watts of power to the computer in addition to providing enough power for all the ports here on it. So each of these ports can supply enough power for bus powered devices. And that's not always the case when you're daisy chaining stuff. And one of the things that OWC says this dock is useful for is that instead of having a big daisy chain, you can connect each device individually here to the hub and be able to disconnect and reconnect them at will without having to break Thunderbolt chains. And I think that can be very useful for folks. The ports here also support display output. We were able to hook up a 4K60 display using a USB-C to HDMI adapter here. Display port adapters will also work with it. This will support two 4K displays at 60 hertz or a single 5, 6, or 8K display out of one of these ports. It's basically going to give you the same display output options that a single port would. And that was nice to see on here. These little dots above the ports are for cable locks, which prevent the uh, cables from getting pulled out if you happen to snag one. Uh, over here is a Kensington lock. Your power supply goes in there. And then on the front here, we've got the cable connection for going back to your PC. It does come with a Thunderbolt 4 cable that's of decent length, a little bit longer than we typically see with hard drives and network adapters and stuff. So you should have enough cable length for uh, the device here to sit on the desk and have the power supply under the desk and uh, be able to get that cable snaked over to your computer. And then of course you've got the USB 3.2 port there on the front. And this little hole here is for turning off the light that's on the top of the dock, which you'll see when we get everything plugged in. So what I'm going to do now is connect this up to my MacBook Air. We're going to connect two Thunderbolt devices and a USB device to the Thunderbolt ports here in the back. And we'll take a look and see what we see on the Mac screen. All right, this is not the prettiest demonstration here, but it will be functional. So we've got now the dock here connected via this cable to the Mac's Thunderbolt port here. And if we jump over to the Mac screen, you can see that we are uh, definitely charging the battery. So we're getting power delivery. 
Now connected to this, I've got a Thunderbolt 3 hard drive. This is a Samsung X5 that in full disclosure came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program a little while back. We have a Sabrent Thunderbolt 3 10 gig ethernet adapter. This is what I've been using upstairs with this computer for the last week or so with this dock and it's been working fine on my multi gigabit internet connection and in full disclosure this came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program a little bit earlier as well and then I've got a USB drive connected to one of the Thunderbolt ports here on the back this is a SanDisk Extreme drive that we reviewed a few weeks ago and in full disclosure this came in from SanDisk free of charge a little while back as well now let's jump back to the Mac screen and see what it sees and we are in the Mac system information now and as you can see here on our Thunderbolt device tree on bus zero which is the first port here on the Mac you can see that it detected the Thunderbolt hub from other world computing and you can see the connection status here of each of those ports and it gives us a good read out of all of that. You'll also see that it has recognized that it's got the uh, portable SSD X5, the Samsung drive, and the Thunderbolt 3 to 10 gig ethernet adapter, but you're not going to see the SanDisk drive on this list because it's a USB device and not a Thunderbolt device. So if we go over here to USB, you can see here on the USB 3.1 bus, we have the uh, hub here from other world computing and connected to that, is the SanDisk drive running at up to 10 gigabits per second, which is its max USB bus speed. So everything here is being detected properly and all is good. By the way, if that light is too bright, there is that little hole in the front that you can use to make it dimmer or to shut it off completely. So if you don't want that light glowing at you, there is a way to get it off. Now what I wanna do is do a quick little speed test of the fastest device we've got on the bus here. This is the Samsung X5 drive. And what I'm gonna do is go back to the Mac here and we're going to run a Blackmagic disk speed test. And the performance that you're seeing here is exactly what I get when this drive is directly connected to my computer. There's really no performance reduction here. Now the maximum theoretical bandwidth of a single Thunderbolt connection is 40 gigabits per second. And if we go back to that test here, you'll see that that Samsung drive is not quite there, right? It's reading at about 20-ish gigabits per second and writing out at about half that rate of speed. And you would assume that maybe you could take two Thunderbolt drives, connect them to the hub here, and create a software RAID. And we did that a little bit earlier on a live stream. You can see what I set up there. And when you create a RAID 0 array, you can typically get almost double their performance because you're aggregating both the storage and speed of two devices together. And I thought maybe we could squeeze out a little bit more performance and get closer to that theoretical maximum. But as you can see here, after we created that RAID array, uh, we were getting better performance on writes than these drives were doing individually, but the reads were actually a little bit lower, kind of maxing out still around the 20 gigabits per second range here. And the reason that we're not getting more speed is that Thunderbolt has overhead. And of course, we're connecting through a single Thunderbolt connection back to the computer. So we're going to have a actual real life maximum beyond just the theoretical maximum. And there's a great document that Intel put together really detailing all of the intricacies of how bandwidth is shared over these cables. It's really a fascinating read and answered a lot of questions for me. But the bottom line here is on uh, page number seven, uh, where it shows you what kind of maximum performance you can expect out of a Thunderbolt connection. And in the case of our RAID 0 thing that we just ran, as you can see here, a data-only connection with just data devices attached like we had in that test, you're going to see a maximum real-world bandwidth of about 22 gigabits per second in both directions. So you are getting 40 in the aggregate total, but the reality here for real-world back and forth is 20 gigabits per second each way. And then you can see also in this document the impact of adding displays into the mix. But what's neat about Thunderbolt is that these are not always absolutes and it does uh, balance the data out based on what is needed. So you could have a DisplayPort monitor attached, for example, and it may not be consuming all the bandwidth all the time, especially if you're just looking at a web page or something. So these numbers will fluctuate and vary quite a bit. But if performance is really critical for a device that you're connecting to your computer, then you'll want to plug it into its own Thunderbolt port because this again is sharing the connection of these three devices and the one on the front 
over that Thunderbolt cable back to the PC. And then we tried some crazy experiments to see what would work and what wouldn't work. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the dock can allow you to plug monitors into it and get your display routed out through the display port features of Thunderbolt. So what we did is we hooked up an eGPU to one of the ports on the dock, and then we also connected up a USB-C to HDMI adapter on another port of the dock just to see what would happen. And what happened was that the laptop was routing video out of its internal GPU to the monitor that we had behind the uh, GPU there on the desk that you can see. It was a 4K monitor. And so that was working as we expected it to work because we did not have that uh, HDMI adapter plugged into the eGPU. We did plug in another monitor into the eGPU and that one worked fine as well. So that worked as expected, which was pretty cool. Uh, the other thing we did was a shared bandwidth test where we were running an eGPU benchmark and a disk speed test on one of those Samsung drives at the same time. And of course, both of those were plugged into the dock. Now, the eGPU got a score of 29,257 on Geekbench when that disk speed test was running at the same time. We then turned off the disk speed test and ran the eGPU test again, and we got a higher score of 34,287. And I think this is a good indicator of Thunderbolt's ability to allocate bandwidth, even in a situation where you've got a bunch of high-performance devices plugged into the same hub. So altogether, I've been very pleased with what this device has delivered for me, because when I started using my new MacBook Air M1 as my daily driver, I lost two Thunderbolt ports because my other Mac had four of them. And when I edit video, I actually have two SSDs that I use for editing. So I was really frustrated with a lack of a good option. And now I've got one. Uh, so what I do is I plug my two SSDs into the Thunderbolt ports here on the back. And in fact, those SSDs are USB SSDs. And then I've got my Thunderbolt uh, Ethernet adapter plugged into the third spot there, and everything's been working fine. No performance hit. I got power going to the laptop, so I only have to give up a single port, and I still have another port available on the host Mac. All good, and it's really helped improve my workflow. What I think is really cool about this is that each of these ports behaves like a traditional Thunderbolt port does, so you can plug a monitor or two into these and be able to get display output, which has not been the case with a lot of the USB-C ports we've seen on some of the docking stations we've reviewed. And you can kind of roll your own dock with this thing. I think the price is right on it, the flexibility is good, and it's been rock solid and stable for me uh, throughout the last week that I've been using it. So this is something that I am very comfortable recommending, especially if you need more Thunderbolt ports. Just keep in mind some of the limitations of the shared bandwidth, but for my purposes, it hasn't been a problem at all and I am very happy with what I am getting out of this dock. That's gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Jim Peter, Tom Albrecht, Frank Lewandowski, Mark Bollinger, and Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.